Join us for a driving review of the all-new Škoda Octavia. Let's go! The front of the new Škoda Octavia is sportier than before. You can see here there's wider front grille, vertical fins, chrome accentuation, and then it leads over directly into the headlamps that makes the sleek line, daytime running light, and it starts with LED from base and optional and matrix LED with dynamic light function. 4 meter 69, 15 foot 4 or 185 inches is the length of this new generation Škoda Octavia. It's almost the same length as before and length it sits between a VW Golf variant and a VW Passat. So Škoda has always been let's say in the middle of the VW models lengthwise. Pretty interesting strategy. This is here available as the Combi, the Estate once again or also as the so-called Hatch or is it a sedan or a fastback, however you want to call it. It's, you know, falling roofline, but with a wide opening hatch then in the rear. This one, of course, here the more versatile one. The other one would be a little bit more design oriented. You can see the main design is above the door handles. This one here with chrome frames around the windows. And we have today here 17 inch wheels. Because design change definitely in the rear, where you have the tail lamps now in a more modern way, horizontally drawn with the, you know, side light here also in a more modern structure. I think overall it looks a little sleeker than before definitely. And also interesting info now as for the suspension, you get a base suspension, then you have 50 millimeters lower sport suspension, a fixed one, 50 millimeters higher, so to say off-road suspension that comes with a Scout or also optional for other models. And then there's the DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control Adaptive Suspension, which is always about 10 millimeters lower, but then with sports and comfort mode. Yay, the Octavia gets the gas struts. Even the Golf doesn't get that anymore. Petrol engines, three cylinder, one liter, 110 horsepower, four cylinder, 1.5 liter, 150 horsepower. When you get the DSG, dual clutch transmission, also with M heft then. And then diesel side, this one here, 2 liter TDI, either 115 horsepower, 150, the one you see here, or 200. The latter two ones also available with all-wheel drive. And if you pick this one here with all-wheel drive, it's the only 150 horsepower engine, which you then get the multi-link rear suspension. Interesting. And then there will be the PHEV, the 1.4 liter turbo petrol engine made it with the electric motor, 204 or 245 horsepower in the RS IV. And last but not least, there will be a CNG engine with the 1.5 liter. So that's a lot of choices overall. Then interior here with a soft touch and a structured inside material that's well done. Also interesting how the new handle has been integrated right there. Reasonable space at the inside door pocket, optional Canton sound system, we'll soon also test it. We can also put up the volume here uh, at the steering wheel directly and also heated steering wheel is also on the left side. Soon more to the new screens. Here a fabric insert for the decor element. Very beautiful. We we'll see more of that soon. Seats today here, the black ones with animal skin, but you start usually with fabric. And then there's also some mixed seats available. And you can also get a microfiber surface that's also in the price list. And there will also be an RS sport seat if you like it even sportier. And there is also supposed to be an all new fabric material called Thermoflux available. I hope we, we will be able to show you that at a later stage as well. Now let's get inside. And as we know from the Octavia, we already have a lot of room in the front. 
It is a compact platform, but it already feels like a mid-size vehicle here in the very front. As for the space you have available, interior overview, soft touch here on the top dashboard, then a beautiful fabric insert here. This is a great trim or great design option, definitely. And also with the bright aluminum style they have here. Digital instruments are now standard at the world premiere. We first thought analogs would be still available. That was updated. Meanwhile, this information, so only digital instruments in 10.25 inch. Right side, either a smaller 8 inch or this one here at 10 inch. This is the biggest one available. And you can see there are no physical buttons here. And the lower part here is a slider for the volume. And by the way, volume, Canton sound system. That sounds good. So. Pretty neat sound from that. Then shift by wire first time for the DSG shifting lever, pull it back to drive, pull it forward for the reverse mode. It's easier to switch between drive and reverse. It just goes faster because there's no mechanical link. And here you can, so to say, manual control the AC unit. But what I realized is even in the first step, it's quite loud. In the second step, it's already very loud as for the vents that are blowing. And the GPS map looks like this. So could be a little bit more responsive, but I think it overall gives you a good overview. Digital instruments look like this. And then with the button or the jog wheel I showed you earlier, at the steering wheel, you can then choose what you want to have left or right. So you're a little bit more flexible and even more so to change the whole view for that thing. You can, for example, put the GPS map all the way fully through. That's of course one of the big advantage here of these digital instruments. And there's also a head-up display as an option for the speed and low speed and also some GPS input. Instead of the rear door, hard pack, but we have a manual sunshade here. That's actually quite nice. Then getting inside and special thing about the Octavia is always you have a lot of rear legroom, although it's not the longest vehicle and even a little bit better than before, but hasn't changed that much actually. Electric hatch we have here today is an option and 640 liters now for the base trunk setup here for the estate. That's 40 liters and before, 40 liters more than before. Press here, press twice for this cover. It's a good solution with the rails left and right. Here you can see how the cabin trolley fits in. It also would fit in, in this way here. What's up? Thomas is driving lounge here with the all new Škoda Octavia. And we we'll tell you everything about, you need to know about this generation, what has changed, the previous one. And also I give you some remarks as for VW Golf 8, new Audi A3, new Seat Leon, recently driven all these three and how do they compare? And of course, here about the engine we're driving today and fuel economy and so on and so on. So let's start with the first details. In general, the Octavia also gives you a very good, neutrally balanced feeling in the handling. And it is a very good price performance deal, told you that earlier. And it has also been the case before because we have so much space on the interior. And still, it's not that you would feel you would drive a super huge car. So you can easily move it around everywhere, no problem. And suspension also gives you, on a you know, on the base level, a good comfort. However, you do feel the difference here, the Seat Leon and the Skoda Octavia, both of the test vehicles we've been getting with the engines that were 150 horsepower. In this case then, told you earlier, no multi-link in the rear, but the torsion beam. Germany would be that we have the Verbundlenker Achse in the back and <laughs> not the Mehrlenker Achse. Yeah, so the less sophisticated form of the rear axle or the rear suspension, and you do feel that Again, the suspension is not bad. And we also have the DCC, dynamic chassis control, that means adaptive dampers. So this does give you some comfort and also spend between comfort and sportiness. At the moment, I'm in a comfort mode. I'm just talking about, you feel that the VW Golf and the Audi A3, which we've both been driving, and these two test vehicles did have the more sophisticated rear axle. And they were just better to drive, you know, 
let's say, more comfortable and sporty at the same time, um, you know, on a high level. Of course, when the car is a little bit stiffer, you immediately think it's sportier, but that's not necessarily the case. It just feels like it would be, you know, but again, on a high level, it's still a good comfort you get here from this new Octavia, just that the A3 and the Golf are better in this respect, or it will be the same when you pick high horsepower versions for the Octavia and Le Lind Leon. Just again, the difference, because it's very complicated, the 150 horsepower mark is where Golf and A3 still or already get the Malta-Link suspension and Leon and Octavia still get the other one, you know, the, the torsion beam than just when you have more horsepower. Or this very car we've been driving here with all-wheel drive. This is the one exception that also gets the Malta-Link because when you put the all-wheel drive you need that. So. That's about suspension settings, but um, I'll soon also go to the sports one when you enter the motorway. We'll also have a high speed part today. I see everything in line of sight, also with a head up display. That's a difference to the Leon, where it is not available that yet. So, the matrix LED and the head up display might be coming later for the Leon, maybe with a like in two or three years with a facelift. But here, the Octavia already has that both features actually. Steering feeling is nice is no dead zone anywhere, good commands to the road. It also depths a little bit when you go to the sports mode. It gets a little bit stiffer if you prefer that. Or you can also set it to the individual mode. And then you can just set different settings you want to have. And here in the sports mode, gears are also turned up higher. Zoom more to that when we enter the motorway. Back to the comfort mode because I want the most comfort from the suspension. It's also very silent in here so far. When we drive faster, we can test it even better. So back to the sports mode. We're also in the sports shifting mode. And let's see, we'll have another acceleration and also see how it performs at higher speeds, noise insulation wise and so on. So we're now accelerating from 50 kilometers an hour to whatever, let's see. So that's 180 kilometers an hour, and I mean, for not sports engine, still a good result, definitely. And here at about, I mean, still driving 170 kilometers an hour, it's quite good for noise insulation, and now 160, let's do a lane change. Cars are relatively stable, but you see it was 17 inch wheels, and the DCC here, I mean, it's not as stable as I uh, recently had now with the Mercedes CLA shooting brake. So it shows that this car is not set on the sportiest note, but I think it's also okay. You know? And also, I mean, wheel choice is something and suspension choice definitely too. We were in the sports mode already. Brake feel. I recently heard that the Seat Leon is supposed to have not such a good brake feel. It's here. I can't really complain about that. I'll retest it also with the Seat Leon ST, the sports tour, which would be the more direct competitor to this one here. And now going back to the comfort mode and setting the cruise control once again. It's telling me manually now, please drive in the center of the lane. <laughs> By the way, assistant systems, you can also have a separate hotkey here for that. So, and then you can check you know, lane assist is on, side assist is on, and the two screws control is actually on. So, and then you can also deactivate one of these with when something is getting, let's say, um, too annoying for you or so, you know. In the tunnel now, you can see how it looks like at night. It's also some ambient lighting here, in this case, then in green, which is also well done. Also with digital instruments. They come as a standard. And now the conclusion for today with the all new Skoda Octavia. I think in the front, especially here with the new headlamp design and also in the rear, it looks sportier, more dynamic than before, more modern definitely. And I think that's very well done overall. 
again available as the estate or as the hatch or sedan however you want to call this fastback opening then for the sedan version you can check out more of that also in our static reviews interior a good build quality all digitalized now so some commands are now a little bit harder to put in that's the disadvantage had the same experience with the Golf and all the Seat Leon. Just the Audi A3 still, for example, has manual climate knobs, what I, for example, really prefer. Seats are actually good in the comfort and there are also better choices available. So we'll test more of the versions throughout the Octavia reviews, which will be coming up soon. The best thing here about the Octavia is still that you have so much space on the inside. That's really the key to it, even more than before. So it is still one of the best price performance ratios on the market when you think about what you pay for it, especially if you don't go to the highest trim and then what space you have on the interior for that. Still very, very good here with the Octavia and even better now in the rear. Driving wise, it's nothing spectacular, but it is a very good balanced neutral handling feeling once again. I wouldn't say it has changed much from the predecessor to the new generation here now, but it was always just at a good and comfortable level. Thing is, yeah, the A3 and the Golf, they get the better rear axle in the lower engine outputs already. With the Octavia and the Leon, you have to go for a higher horsepower spec to also get a better rear axle. And DCC, the dynamic chassis control, the adaptive suspension is also always a good pick if you want to increase the comfort a little bit more. Very good, and that's also one of the key things here, is the fuel economy. The 1.5 TSI, which we've been driving in the A3, in the Golf and in the Leon, was always scoring very good figures. So about 5 liters on 1 km were possible. Here, a little bit less than 4 liters on 1 km with the 2 liter TDI in this 150 horsepower spec. And that's of course really, that's about 60 mpg US and even more than 70 mpg UK. That's really awesome. However, if you think about that the difference between diesel and petrol is not that huge, might still be making more sense than to go for the petrol unless you're going for very, very high mileage. And the other thing is, whereas the petrol can be driven very efficient, but goes way up in the fuel um, consumption when you really floor it, the diesel has always a smaller span between minimum and maximum consumption you might want to take that into account, depending also on taxation on your market. So, impressions for the day. Again, throughout this generation, we'll present you more engine versions. The IV, the plug-in hybrid, will also be very interesting. Also compared to the Skoda Superb, which we've driven recently with the IV. See you there. Also at one of the competitor reviews, Golf, A3, Seat Leon, Seat Leon ST coming up soon. They will all be linked in the video description or in the pinned comment. And you can always use the YouTube search, typing Autogefühl, Seat Leon, for example, and then you'll find it via the YouTube search. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did and see you next time.